Hello everyone, Anders here, and I think I have a pretty interesting patch for you today. I'm taking four different CV sounds, mixing them together through a quantizer to create a single sequence. I'm using the MetaQ app on Ornament and Crime as a quantizer because it can run in continuous mode. Instead of sample and holding the incoming signal when it receives a trigger, it's continuously quantizing and sends a trigger out whenever there's a note change. The first signal we're mixing in is a constant voltage source, which can be useful as an offset once we have more stuff being sequenced. Next thing I'm going to do is set the scale to pentatonic major. As you can see, we can go up and down on the offset and it's starting to sound musical. Now let's mix the second CV source, the 2HP LFO. This is the rightmost blue patch cable. The mixer allows us to attenuate how wide a range of notes the LFO covers. With the voltage offset, we can move the range of notes up and down. Okay, the other two inputs, which are the other two blue patch cables, are the subharmonicon sequencers. I'm going to mix in the bottom sequencer first, and you'll see how it affects the notes and the rhythm of triggers the MetaQ is outputting. I'm starting super fast so you can see it change more dramatically before we slow things down. I'm going to add a copy of the sequencer to the filter cutoff to add some brightness to higher notes by having the filter open them up a bit. Okay, I'm using the same CV input to quantize the second channel on MetaQ, and I'm sending it to the volts per octave of the second VCO. But this time I have it sampled and held based on the second subharmonicon sequencer, so that it changes less frequently than VCO1. One thing to pay attention to is how the first and second sequence don't always line up because of the way the continuous quantizer is generating triggers. That's still the only thing triggering envelopes on the subharmonicon. Here I have the volts per octave of the first MetaQ sequence modulating the rate of the LFO. What this adds is that the rate will speed up and slow down based on the pitch of the sequence, creating fast high notes and slow low notes. I'm also going to patch the second LFO output to both pulse width modulation inputs to add some extra modulation to the patch.
not. I'd like to point out that there's an excellent Mylar Melodies video, which I'll link below, that also covers this method of combining things together. In his, he uses four square wave LFOs to create a sequence. This is one of those, you can really only do it in modular things. I'm only using a few modules and I'm able to get so many different sounds by creatively using CV to modulate different things. Which brings us to an interesting question. Why do all this? Well, one reason is to create a lot of variation in your sequences. If all the individual parts repeat, the sequence as a whole will eventually repeat, but it might be much, much longer. Sometimes you'll hear small phrases repeating, but transposed up or down. So while it's not exactly repeating, it doesn't feel random either. Another reason is to create interesting rhythms. Sure, the subharmonicon is designed to create rhythms, but this way we're making melodies that have a sort of unclocked feel. Since the LFO isn't in sync with the sequencers, the notes don't all line up neatly on a grid. A third reason, and I'm sure there are more, is the ease at which you can adjust things. The voltage offset can transpose an entire sequence up or down. The attenuators on each input can create completely different sequences with the smallest knob turn. There's an interesting trade-off happening. Changing the attenuation or speed or notes of a sequence can have unintended side effects because of the way the different inputs interact with each other, especially if you're also using them to modulate other parts of your patch like rhythm speed, LFO rate, or pulse width modulation. I see this as being the main reason to try this approach. You sacrifice being able to select individual notes to instead try to discover new possibilities. This is the final big change of the patch, playing around with the frequencies of the sub-oscillators. The knobs change the frequency and stepped values. To quote from the manual, the sub-frequency is equal to the initial pitch of the VCO divided by a whole number integer value from 1 to 16. As you rotate the knob, you're actually selecting the integer value used. Instead of worrying about integer values, I had them tuned to octaves to start, and now I'm going to use my ear to find interesting intervals that sound good in context. This takes a little bit of experimenting, and you're going to hear that process now. And that's the patch. I'm going to let it play out for a bit. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.